for now. Okay, so that was the ending. That's another ending we just got. Um, we can try to tickle instead here, and maybe Iggy won't get all the goo on him that caused him to kind of morph and change. What are we playing? This is a game called um, Beacon Pines. Um, I would click out a game, but I'm a bit nervous. I don't want to. I don't know if it's been saving automatically or not. I have no idea. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> um, it's much more playing, of course, if you guys are ever interested in what we were doing. Um, playing it on PC through Game Pass. This came out very recently. It is a adventure game um, with very light like horror elements. And it's kind of like a choose your own adventure sort of deal. Um, you can go back and change your answers to things. Oh, we have struggle now for this one too. Um, and you can see the branching pathways. It's a lot of fun. No, no, don't say sorry. I really appreciate you guys doing that, especially when I can't click out. <laughs> um, it has some elements of like Night in the Woods crossed with maybe like Gravity Falls. Um, and I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. It's very, very fun. It's, it's an intriguing story. I love the art and the music. Let's go back to here and see if tickling does anything different. Well, time to bust out the tickle. Yeah, the art's gorgeous. Well, time to bust out the tickles. So again, Iggy, that little, that little twerp, was kind of making fun of Luca and his parents and everything situation. So. Luca lunged at him last time and knocked him into this green goop, which we've established. It seems to age things. Um, so like half of Iggy's face was looking older. His arm was massive. Um, as if he had grown up. Um, which is kind of a scary thought, because like, what if it just keeps aging and like, it just dies, you know? Like, that's horrifying. Um, this time we're going to see if tickling works. Hey Tish, want to see something cool? Yep. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began a tickle under Tish's arms. Oh, Tish gets the tickles. <laughs> Just flapping. What the? Tish, is she tickling you? Yep. <laughs> Hi, yep. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, there's just long noises. Tears began to form in Tisha's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. <laughs> Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. What just happened? She seemed nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. I just remembered. I have somewhere to be. Hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. <gasps> oh! <gasps> oh no, wait, she got it. Uh oh. Whoa. What a little creep. Uh, Beck, I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Oh, it just lightened it a bit. Is it bad? Depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh, God. That's a lot better outcome, I feel Chapter like, though, four. right? Hey, Rebecca, how's your day going? The best policy. So it's a different title, too. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. It was kind of cute, yeah. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her. But finding Rolla was his primary concern. All right, so that, that is a different outcome. That's a different branch. I need that stuff doing my roots would be amazing. <laughs> Luca, what the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in a panic? Foxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. That's Beck. I don't care who she is. What happened? We are just helping look for Rolo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling, but this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. 
We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rolo and I weren't just playing in Weepwood yesterday. We were investigating lights in the old Valentine warehouse. But someone was there in a strange suit. And we hid in the dumpster, and a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault. And I know my best friend may never come back. Wow. Just, wow. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground and thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Rella's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. It's too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around, I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. You go back to that little tree house you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. Sound like a plan? Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. He did the right thing telling me the truth. Now scoot. Okay, so that wasn't a choice. It just was. We like Luca. Yes, Luca's the main character. Our friend is Rolo, and we now have Beck as well. Those three are fine. The bully is Iggy, and he's a little jerk. <laughs> Do you really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? This place gives me the willies. We have the treehouse in case Rollo shows up. Can everyone use name cards, please? Yeah, that's the one thing. I don't think it tells you, like, a name for who's talking. Fun fact, as a kid... Mr. Nungry oh. jumped with a start. As a kid, when I was playing Pokemon, like, the first generation, it would go Oak, colon, and then would spell, like, you know, would have his dialogue. I always just thought they were saying their names ahead of what they were saying, and I was very confused by this as a child. I was also learning to read, so. Character guides in the back of the book. <laughs> Mr. Nuncreed jumped with a start. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Sorry. Who were you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. But the dang thing never does, of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. The whole thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. Rolo knows those woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Silly boy's antics have this whole town word sick. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be that he's lost? I don't like this man. He was hidden on Grandma earlier. He's not playing a prank and he didn't get lost. Oh. I mean, something's going on. Someone took him, I know it. How could you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else that you know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. This music has me worried. Dang it, boy, if there's something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Uh oh. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. A <laughs> pepper, yes. <laughs> there was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. Uh oh. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. There was a blank lurking behind those eyes. <gasps> shame. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. Yesterday, Rolo and I were messing around at the old Valentine warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Both of you? You were with Rolo when he went missing. No, exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. Dumpster? Uh-oh. What were you doing in there? At first, we were just looking around. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. 
That was the last I saw of him. He got scared by some garbage? Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Mr. Nancreed's shoulders slumped. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Uh-oh. Why did you have to... I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. Uh-oh. But you Van Horns just can't help yourselves, can you? We're so, so close, so close to being done with this. With a firm shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. Oh. What are you doing? It's out of my hands now. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. <gasps> Wait. Shit. <gasps> Is he- wait. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. I figured that was- that was that. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. Uh-oh. The end. So he... I'm trying to work out the logistics of it because we had spoken to him just before we went in there, I think, the first time. But he said the exact same thing, dot, 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 and then shit. <laughs> Um, as the first hazmat suit did. Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else.